sermon handouts, which are in your bulletin for today. <coughs> and notice, in case there is any question about who Jesus is, I am kind of telling you on our sermon handout. And that is, Jesus is who? Oh, it says Jesus God. is God. That's what it says here. It says it in black and white. It says it here. But I'm going to show you how Jesus claims to be God today. Because there's a lot of confusion in our church. And we kind of act as though, you know, maybe Jesus wasn't very clear about it. And even in our own denomination, I get very frustrated, especially with some of our pastors who just think that Jesus is a nice guy who had a few nice words to say. But we can choose to accept some of the things and not accept some of the thing, those things that we don't want to accept. And I just want to pull my hair out. And boy, there's a lot there to pull, let me tell you. And uh, the problem with that is that Jesus either is who he claims to be, or he was absolutely insane. So either he is God, or we've got no reason to be here this morning. I happen to believe that Jesus is the name that brings us here today. And I'm so grateful for that, and I'm grateful that you feel the same <laughs> way. So let us take a look at that. I mean, it just reminds me, you know, a little bit, maybe you've, you've had this happen to you when you're driving down the road and you've got your navigator, as uh, Terry calls it, your navigator, pardon me, to the right of you, who's telling you where to go, right? And all of a sudden you forget the directions and you say, wait a minute, am I supposed to take a turn, a left turn at this next light? And they say, right. Okay, are you supposed to turn right or left? <laughs> am I right? <laughs> What does that mean? There's a little confusion there. Yeah, okay? I, am I correct and wanting to turn left? Or am I wrong wanting to turn left and I should go right? It's kind of like an Abbas, Abbott and Costello skit. Who's on first? <laughs> we right? Just watch, we just watched what's that. that isn't that a riot? That thing is so funny. Who's on first? Wait, what's the guy? That, what's the name of the guy in first? No, he's on second base. It is really confusing sometimes. Yeah. And so know. Jesus is trying to kind of get rid of all that confusion. <laughs> and he tries to tell us in a couple of different ways who he is. But some people just don't want to believe it. So a little bit about the background of our lesson for today. We're going to verse, verse 22. Jesus came to what was called the Feast of the Dedication in Jerusalem, and it was winter time. Well, because the Feast of the Dedication is in winter. Now, we also know the Feast of Dedication by two different names. The first one is called the Festival of Lights. We'll come up with a name momentarily by which you probably know this festival. So anyway, the Festival of Lights, a little bit about the background of this festival, and then we'll go on with the verse for today. How this came about was the king of Syria, who was the name, by the name of Antiochus, was really a Greek sycophant. He loved Greek culture and Greek mythology and Greek religion, and he was defeating the world in about 170 AD, or give or take, and he didn't like the fact that the Jews were worshiping God, Yahweh, the God of the Jews. He wanted to eliminate from Jewish culture any mention of Yahweh and any of the mention of the uh, Jewish religion and faith, and so he wanted to impress upon them the Greek philosophy and the Greek religion. But many were Jews resisted accepting of the Greek philosophies and religions. And so he sent his army out that slaughtered and wiped out 80,000 Jews in one day. And in a very short battle, they just slaughtered them. And then they took many, many, many of the Jews and sold them into slavery all across the world. And then he made it a capital offense. For those who don't know what that means, that means it was criminally prosecuted. You would be killed if you circumcised your, your boy ch children, and if you had possession of a Torah, which is, of course, the Jewish, old, what we call the Old Testament, the Jewish Bible. And so he made it a capital offense. You could all be killed if you did that. So what he also did is he turned the temple into a home of prostitution. And then the Holy of Holies became the Holy of Holies dedicated to Zeus. And there they sacrificed Pigs. You can't imagine a more offensive thing to Jewish culture mm -hmm. than doing what they did with the temple. So there was a guy by the name of Judas Maccabeus. He and his brothers, they just did not, this did not set well with them. They decided to lead a rebellion against King, Antio uh, uh, King Antiochus. And what they decided to do 
is to throw off his rule and to get rid of all the soldiers that he had left behind of the Syrian army. And they fought a long battle against King Antiochus. They finally delivered the people to Jerusalem. They finally set free the temple. And there they decided they were going to cleanse the temple so they could use it for worship again. The problem is they only had a little bit of oil, enough oil for one day. And they said, but it's an eight-day process to rededicate something that has been defiled this way. And surprisingly, there was a miracle that took place. That one day of oil extended into eight entire days so that they could cleanse the temple and do the ritual of cleansing of the temple. And now you may know what we call the celebration. Hanukkah. Hanukkah. There you go. So Hanukkah is the celebration that Jesus is at on this day that we call in the Bible the Fe Feast of the Dedication, the Festival of Lights. Jesus is there to celebrate Hanukkah. How cool is that? A little bit of background. Then we go on in our lesson. So Jesus was in the temple area walking in Solomon's, Solomon's colonnade. What is Solomon's colonnade? Now, you might remember, as we've talked about the temple before, the temple was set up in several different areas. You had the Holy of Holies, in which only the high priest could go to. You then had the temple area where the people would gather, where the men would gather in the front, the Jewish women in the back, but then you had what was called the colonnade, where the Gentiles would gather. And so this is the place where the Gentiles would gather to worship God. And this is where Jesus is, and all of a sudden he's confronted by a lot of Jewish leaders and a lot of people who want to ask him, who are you? They want to know. Don't keep us in suspense any longer, they go on to say. So the Jews gather around Jesus and said, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus said, I did tell you, you just do not believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. And so what Jesus is basically saying to them, because they're coming to trap him, they want to accuse him of blasphemy. Jesus says, I'm going to tell you plainly who I am, because quite frankly, you're a bunch of blockheads. Didn't you see that in there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that. That's what he said. You're a bunch of blockheads, you dummies. He said, I showed you the power that I have, and I told you who I am. In fact, right before this lesson, you're welcome Maybe after our, our lesson for today, open up the Bible and take a look at the story that takes place just before this. It is a miracle story where Jesus heals a lame person. Who has the power to heal lame people? The priests? The rabbis? No. no Jesus. Only Jesus. And only Jesus or only God has the power to truly heal. So again, he's saying, I showed you. Have you ever seen anybody heal a lame person? No. Then who do you think I am? How dumb are you? But that's not all. He also said, I told you through my words. In fact, just before this, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Do you get that? That's a claim of divinity. Why? Because first of all, there's that phrase, I am. We often say the Jewish word from which we translate that phrase, I am, it's a name of God. Do you know what name of God that is? Testing your Bible knowledge here. Yahweh. Maybe you've heard it in the old days. It was, we used to pronounce it Jehovah. We found out that it's a wrong pronunciation of it. It's really pronounced Yahweh. But the name Yahweh, the name of God, Jesus is using when he says, I am the light. Yahweh is the light. I am Yahweh. I am the light of the world. I am God. I'm the one sent from God. I am God on earth. How much more clear could he be? Blockheads. Right? You like that? I'll have to say it under five times. Okay. It's just that some people, no matter what a person does or says, they just are not going to believe. Let me go on. Verse 26. You do not believe me because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them. They follow me. I give them eternal life. They shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I love that. So Jesus says, the people who follow me are going to receive these three things. Eternal life, he says, indestructible life, and secure life. 
no matter how hard the challenges of life might be, and I guarantee you, you all have been through some difficult challenges in your life. It's not a promise that you're not going to go through hard times. The promise here is simply this, that when you do go through hard times, you will have support from the Almighty God. Okay, so listen to that again, the way Jesus said it. I give them eternal life, they shall never perish, no one can snatch them out of my Father's hands. Eternal life, indestructible life, a secure life in God's care. That's an amazing promise that God, that God makes to us. And then verse 29, my Father has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hands, because I and the Father are one. one. They are one. So how can Jesus make the promises to you that he makes? Because he has great confidence that can only come if you're God. And you know the story. And he and God are one, he says. They are one in heart. They are one in purpose. They are one in essence. He and God are one. So the question then becomes is, what are you going to do with Jesus? So Jesus already tells us that. He says, what, is, what does a sheep do? My daughter should like that. We're sheep, right, Carissa? Yes. That's awesome. She loves her animals. So we're sheep. What do sheep do? They, outside of bleeding, they follow. They don't follow they? The shepherd. They follow the shepherd. They listen to his voice. They hear him. They follow him. Because honestly, sheep have great affection for the shepherd. And that's what we are called to do. But I give you a caution, and this is where we come to the box at the bottom of the page. Because we are in that season where there's a lot of voices, tyrannical voices, voices, authoritarian type of voices, that are trying to demand you come and follow them. And I am telling you that none of them are worth it. I'm not trying to make any political type of statement outside of this. That for Christians, the only person worth following and listening to is Jesus. Because I will tell you, as good a politician might be, or as good a great a hero a, 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 a baseball star might be to you, or as great a, a hero as a, some humanitarian might be, maybe you're a big lover of what Bill Gates has done in his Bill Gates Foundation, I don't know, or maybe you, you just love... Uh, uh, you love scientists and you love what some of these great scientists represent and so forth. Or maybe you're in love with your pastor. That would be great. I'd really appreciate that. <laughs> but you know what? We all fail you. Okay? We, none of us are going to succeed every time. There's going to be times that I disappoint you. There are going to be times that that scientist disappoints you. There are times that hum humanitarian dis is going to disappoint you. There's going to be times that that politician disappoints you. Don't put your trust in any person. We are called to put our trust in Jesus, okay? And Jesus promises if we listen to his voices and follow him, what does he promise again? Eternal, Eternal life. life, a secure life, an indestructible life for those who put their trust in him. I hope those are words of comfort today because that's the Easter message. And so I wish you a wonderful and blessed Easter. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the promise that Jesus makes to us and made to us thousands of years ago. It's a promise that we can take to the bank. Because while everybody else promises to us this, that, the other thing, none of them can truly fulfill what they promise us. But Jesus can. And so you promise us eternal life, a secure life, an indestructible life if we put our trust in you. You will take care of us, and we will not be able to ever be snatched out of the Heavenly Father's hands. And so I'm praying that this would be a security that every single person here would understand, appreciate, and be grateful for. Sometimes, God, we try to go out and do this life on our own. That's not going to get us anywhere. Sometimes we try to listen to those voices calling out to us to follow them. The only voice worthy of following is Jesus. And so God, help us to put our trust in you today that we might have security in Jesus' name. For it is his precious name that we pray. Amen. Amen.